The Riley and Kimmy Show in the celebrity part, or at the celebrity part at Spooky Empire. Sunday is the day, the final day of Spooky for us, and we had to stop by and see our favorite zombie. Yes, our favorite zombie at Spooky Empire. And that is, wait a minute, is that you on the... Oh, jeez. No, it's uh, Okay, I, I was going to say, anyway, we, a uh, wait a second, I did Is what? that me? <laughs> I, I just, it's, it's, my, it's Mike Christopher. Mike Christopher is not Godzilla. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think he'd like to play Godzilla. That's why I'm kind of getting the feeling here. Exactly. Funny you should mention Godzilla. I had a 30th anniversary Godzilla cigarette lighter. Yeah? And I recently found it in a, in a drawer. Uh, and I filled it up with lighter fluid, and I clicked it, and I saw the flame, and the thing burst into flame right in my hand. It must have had a leak in the in the gas cylinder. But Wait a minute, you still have? Yeah, okay, you got all the digits. I was yeah, just making I still sure. Got it. Wow, you're trying to go for the Freddy Krueger thing, I think. There. No, I just Played needed a tie-in with the. <laughs> he did a good segue. Segway. <laughs> That's a, that was the was word he, I was looking for. But one of the things I have a feeling a lot of our viewers and listeners don't realize is you're actually into sound. I mean, because it. You are a sound I'm expert. Can I? I'm kind unsound. Of, you're, you're, well, you're not unsounded. I'm unsound. Yeah, I'm unsound. <laughs> but you really are into sound. You're an audiophile, right? Yes. And musician. And, I, and musician and composer. And, and I even have free music on my Christopher music page on Facebook. I, I was going to get to that. Okay, he's he's ahead of the game here. What, what would you? I, I know it's when you're looking at digital downloads or types of music, they they have to have a genre. Where, what would we put you in? Are you in techno, electronic music? What what would you? What would Mike Christopher be? Mike music. Mike music. Just out there, Mike music. Just, I'm I'm Mike. Right, I know you're I'm Mike. I'm Patrick. I write Mike music. Oh, oh boy, no, but. Because, uh, I mean, you have sound, you've done soundtracks with a, a one project with Joel D. Weinkoop. Right. You guys acted together. I, I love your version of the uh, score. The opening for Joe Vampire? Yes, yes. And hopefully we'll finish that. I l one day. Do you have that still posted, the, the footage? Yeah, there's a Joe Vampire movie uh, page on Facebook, too. And that's where my, you can see the, like the first opening 10 minutes for Joe Vampire, the way it was supposed to be. Now... Now we're jumping over to the vampire movie. Yeah. Joe Vampire, how long did that scene take to shoot where you're climbing out or you're coming out of your bed, cough, coffin bed, whatever? Yeah, that was that was actually the first uh, part that we shot. It probably took an evening, one evening. Okay. Yeah. You're definitely not claustrophobic. No. <laughs> was that your idea? The No, it was uh, the, the producer's idea, Sean Donahue. Okay. And we actually shot it at, at his place. Um, he made a plywood casket because the the concept of the movie was uh, Joe Vampire was uh, a Donner's Luck vampire. Okay. And he was losing energy because for 200 years he gave up um, eating people, uh, live people, you know, uh, feeding on live people. He would just feed on uh, blood from blood banks. Gotcha. So he was r gradually losing energy. Now, but then Sean took the the movie that was supposed to be a 90 minute feature and he took it into a studio and he chopped it up and came up with a, a less than accurate or less than quality version. So I'm not, it's out there, but you probably don't really want to see it. So the original or the original concept might be remade? Is that what you're saying basically? Yeah, we did it. We did a rough cut of the thing a couple years ago and I was really happy with that, but it was not an original soundtrack and there's still had some, some special effects to put in it and still had some, uh, the original music to be shot to now, put into the mo movie, but instead of finishing it properly, uh, Sean was the producer and he could do it if he wanted. So he kind of ran off with the project and, and did a sleazy version of it. But so if you, I mean, if you want to see the sleazy version of Joe Vampire, it's out there. Okay. Now, if with the I don't want to say reboot, I guess, or the reimagining version that you're in the process of maybe doing, will Joel D. Weinkoop be part of that? Well, he's in uh, several of the scenes, yeah. <laughs> More of you and him together? Um, no, just about the same amount. But uh, we did have a scene with him in the car for the opening credits. <laughs> like, so. It kind of reminded me of Kimmy, the way she drives on the phone, that opening credit scene. If that part is worth seeing. I mean, that's yes. right there. And, of course, him. And you can see it on the Joe Vampire movie page. There, there, I mean, it's Kimmy. You want to see how Kimmy is driving with texting and phone calls and stuff? It's right there. And she's friends with Joel, so we can get away with oh, that. Okay, that's good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Joel Weinkoop's great. Hey, Joel. Hey, Joel. <laughs> we, did, we just did a shout-out to Joel. 
now I, I'm going to cheat here. I did because you do panels, right? Yes. You, you, and you know, you look up some questions and stuff, or just some little background about the person you're going to be on the panel, so you can maybe ask a question they haven't been asked a hundred million times. So right. That's one of the goals. I'm going to ask you a question you've probably been asked a hundred million times, though. Not because I'm lazy. It's just because I was floored when I actually found this yes. about you. You didn't realize that you'd become a pop culture icon. Minor it, celebrity. Yeah, you didn't realize that, is my understanding. You went off after you did the, the uh, Dawn of the Dead, and you went into the world of audio, you know, working audio and films and well, editing. And right before I left Pittsburgh, I, I became a laser operator for uh, Laserium Light Shows. They were showing them at the planetariums. Oh, wow. So I did, I did that for about a year, and then I went out to Los Angeles to be in their special projects division, which was uh, like touring and, and conventions and stuff. Out, outdoor aerials and all kind of unusual film shoots, okay. unusual applications for lasers. And then uh, from there I went to Oberheim Electronics. I worked for in on the first computerized sequencer, drum machine, and synthesizer combination. This is like, I mean, everything's run by computers now. This is a, this is the beginning of that. Okay. Because at that point, computers were were not sophisticated enough. Well, they probably didn't have to, the speed to control. Right? Well. The personal computers were not really sophisticated enough to have lots of music software. So Oberheim made a, a, drum, a computerized drum machine and a computerized sequencer. That they each had their com, uh, computer in it. And then there was also a computer inside the synthesizer. So there was three separate units that would talk to each other and could sync to tape. Whoa. So I would do, I, like I did a Tom McCann commercial um, in uh, Capitol Records Studios out in Hollywood and Vine. And I laid down all the music for the whole commercial in 45 minutes because it was all pre-programmed. And we laid, just laid down a sync tone and laid down the drum machine tracks and laid down the, sequen the sequences from the one synthesizer and the other synthesizer. And the people couldn't believe that um, wow. that, that commercial could have been done that fast, you know, because wow. the, whole, the whole commercial was done in 45 minutes. So, um, and that commercial was actually on my uh, Reverb Nation page, my Christopher. It's okay. called Tom McCann commercial, and it, it, it was actually reran. They reran it, and then um, I, I heard from some friends of mine that lived up in San Francisco. They said they everybody would like would cheer whenever that commercial oh, came geez. on the radio because it was so weird. Whoa! Yeah. So, okay, you have that going on. You're doing yes. well in, in it. When did you? Because I, I read this part and, said, and he didn't realize that he had become a pop icon. I was like, what was the moment? Where was it where you realized that you're part of the, you know, people are loving what you did? Right. Well, after Abraham, I colorized black and white movies. After that, I spent about six years in uh, quality control for video post-production. Whenever they transferred 35 millimeter films to, la to digital so they could make laser discs out of them. Right. I spent about six years doing that. Then I moved to Florida. I was a graphic artist for about seven years. And then I lost my job for being a smart ass. Really? Yeah. You serious? Can't imagine. Not, not you. Can't imagine. No. He never posts anything smart ass wise. No, no, or controversial. Right. Mr. Conservative right here. That's right. That, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and uh, so I, I was just hanging out on MySpace back at that time. MySpace? And MySpace. You remember that? <laughs> and With his genie email account. That's right. <laughs> American Online <laughs> for the real old timers. Um, so I, w I was hanging out on MySpace and I met a couple people on there and um, someone contacted me to do an interview. Okay. And then a guy contacted me from Los Angeles and he said, hey man, he says, you're a hard Christian zombie, right? And I says, yeah. And I says, well, why aren't you doing conventions? He says, well, what do you mean? He said, there's horror conventions. And I said, well, what, what's that? And he said, well, it's like a Star Trek convention, except it's for horror movies and that, you know. He says, yeah, you know, you go to hotels and spend the weekend there and, and do panel discussions and stuff like that. I said, man, I just lost my job. I can't afford to go to conventions, right? you know. He says, no, they'll actually bring you out there. I said, well, why would they do that? He says, because you could sign pictures. I said, well, I don't have anything to sign. He goes, well, you were in the movie, right? And I said, yeah. He said, well, can you, you know, print up a couple pictures? I said, well, I could do screen grabs from a, from a VHS, I mean, from a DVD because I was a graphic artist. He says, yeah, I'll make, you know, do some screen grabs and we'll print you up some pictures. So next thing you know, I went to Spooky Empire in 2007 and I met Petey. Right. 
And I saw Tom Savini for the first time in over 30 years. Oh, wow. And uh, I walked around and looked at it and I said, yeah, this would probably be pretty cool. Uh, the woman that I was with at that time, she was a little, a little bit conservative. And she saw all these, all these ladies walking around in fishnet oh. stockings and bustiers and fangs and blood running down her face. So we get home and she goes, you're not planning on doing that, are you? <laughs> what, you wearing the fishnet and... No, no, not me. Oh, no, oh, okay. no, just hanging out with women oh, okay. that look like that. You know. I, I didn't but know. I, you know. Of course you did. <laughs> Rocky Horror Picture Show, Tim Curry was coming to my mind there. <laughs> he says, you're not planning on doing that, are you? I says, well, I think I have to. I'm the Hare Krishna zombie, you know. He says, well, whenever... Uh, Whenever you start doing those conventions, I think you should move out. Okay. So I moved out. <laughs> oh, jeez. And then shortly after that, um, I w did a, a shoot for Rick Danford, and um, and he did a film festival over in Tampa where he shot that little that little part, and um, that's where I met my current wife. Oh. Oh. The lovely Shade Burnett. Ah. And there's other pictures of her there too. And don't miss the Sid Graves zombie walk. He's a director too, by um, the way, Kimmy. 2010. You're the director. Well, I'm talking about my wife, you know, no, so you're, I have, you're doing, I have to, It's okay, you're, you're the director here, okay? <laughs> All right. So, when you started in 2007, and now we're almost 10 years later, in, oh, in the, it, it, no, 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 no. I'm wondering, have you seen, I don't know, if, because Spooky to me, I don't know if you've been to other cons, different types of cons, yes. Spooky really is different. It's a family, I, I don't mean family, but everybody's family yes. here, and it, it, it just has a party fun feel to it yes. compared to some nerd pop culture cons. Has there been a change, have you noticed, in this con here in time? I mean, just people or anything? Is, it, is there a change? Well, it's not exactly the same as it was in the beginning, but I think it still retains its family uh, camaraderie kind of feel to it. You know? you know, that's one of the things I liked, um, especially last night, is you know we saw Petey, his family was actually yes. part of this, and I'm not bashing it. Dad, right? Petey's dad, uh, he hugged Kimmy. You know, uh, Kimmy gave him cake at oh, the VIP. Oh, good. So, you oh know, yeah, he, he, yeah. He, he got some cake. Yeah. He, did you see the big cake? I know. Uh, a big. I think that's why he, he hugged her. I'm, right. I don't know. <laughs> But you, you have the family here, and I'm not bashing certain big cons in Orlando or Tampa, but they're corporate, a lot of them, right. you know, and you don't have that local connection no. or feel at all, you know. No. So I didn't know if you, you'd seen maybe even a change in behavior with people, too. I was wondering, have you seen the fans different? Are they more intense? Is it the same? Well, every, every year I seem to get more and more uh, fam, more and more, you know, Spooky Empire family people joining the, the, the group is it's it's just getting bigger is that's really cool. that's good about the best yeah best way to describe it. I don't really see a change. I just see that the Spooky Empire family keeps getting bigger and bigger over the years. Nice. Is there any film project in the near future that you're wanting to work on or are planning on working on? Is there any I mean I I'm not throwing his name out just for the heck of it, but I know Joel does like Joel D. Winecoop does like a hundred films it seems like a year. Is there anything right. in the future? No, I'm not nearly as prolific as Joel. Um, Joel's been at it for many, many years. And he's like embedded in the local film scene. I right. moved I moved out of Tampa, so um, I'm not part of that film scene anymore. But uh, coming out soon is a cameo as a mechanic in the remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space. No. Whoa! Whoa! That's the picture there. Whoa! That is, that yeah, is we, you we, just went up a notch two or three or oh, four, man, because I'm a, I'm a big nerd for Ed Wood oh, yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it was a lot of fun. We, we did it up in um, Jeez, was it Virginia, I believe, we shot it? And I believe that the um, that the town that we used for the film was the same town that was used for Groundhog Day. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That is way cool. Yeah, they got they got army trucks and tanks and all kind of crazy. They just really they just really opened their hearts to the movie. I I'm, I play a mechanic, and it's a very short scene. I I try not to die, but. Oh. I'm, Spoiler alert, I 
I don't make it out of the film alive. Now, is this done in a style like Ed Wood did? Let's face it, Ed Wood, if he blew a shot, he didn't care. It was like, instead of taking 30, 40 times, takes to make it that perfect scene, he, he didn't care because he was under that budget restraint, too, because right. of film. And plus, he, I guess he didn't care you know, in some way. He didn't have that eye, that element. Is this done like as a tribute to him, or is it like what this story could have been with a better budget? It's it's a reimagining of the story. Okay. So it's it's quite a bit different. I don't want to give too much away. No, 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 you know, no, no. But, I'm just curious. But yeah, it's 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 really fun. It's it's quite a bit different. It's not shot exactly in a in an okay. Ed Wood style. Okay. But it, it's fun. It, we had a, a blast doing it. Okay. And um, in three weeks, I fly to um, I guess Washington D.C. Virginia area. We're uh, working. I I'm a, the director of a psychiatric hospital. And we're doing a, it's like some of the opening scenes for the movie. It is like a prequel to Night of the Living Dead. Oh. It's called Night of the Living Dead Genesis. Whoa. And basically it's what happened before they made it to the cemetery and into the house. Cool. So it's not a ripoff of the movie. Is Romero not, part of this in any way? No. Okay. No. Uh, Ed, Ed Claude is the okay. director for that. And he... Um, when he sent the script to me, I read the whole thing without stopping. It's just like I just kept going and going, and I was like, re it was the first time I ever read a script where I was watching the movie as I was reading Whoa. the script. So I'm, I'm looking for a pretty powerful piece to come out of that. That is way cool. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, yeah. And, and it just works. I mean, it, I, I think it works. I got, a, I got a lot of grief from some of the Pittsburgh people because, you know, Night of the Living Dead sacred. And, right. It's in the public domain now, and you, even though you're legally able to do what you want with it, they feel that you shouldn't do that. You know? Sort of like touching Citizen Kane, and if somebody tried to do that, it would be that kind of thing, or I to guess, kill a mockingbird thing. I guess, but you know, I mean, I I played Bron Sugar by the Rolling Stones, you know, 150 million times in Holiday Inns across the United States, <laughs> and bars and VFWs, and you know, I mean, it's just. It, if you like something and it's popular, it's a lot, I mean, it's a lot easier for a band to redo a rock and roll song, mm. you know, than it is for somebody to redo a movie. But I really feel if somebody loves loves a movie and they want to redo it, it's really within the realm of possibility. It shouldn't uh, it, it shouldn't be taboo. I mean, they okay. they redid Dawn of the Dead, right? And I thought in its own right it was a really good movie. I don't think it was a remake at all. It was a completely different movie. Two different universes. You can yeah. completely. I don't even know why they used used the name, except for the you know the guy that owns Dawn of the Dead, the original, did this one. Okay. You know. But um, you know, I want to plug something for you here. <laughs> Producers of S Supernatural, Kimmy's favorite TV show. This would be a perfect person for Supernatural TV show. Warner Brothers. We'd love to see you. You know, with uh, Sam and Dean and. Oh, the Winchesters. Yeah. We think he'd be great, wouldn't he, Kimmy? Yep, see? <laughs> All right. Supernatural, please. Get him on. I want to see Crawley. I want to see the devil with you. I, I'm just, I have this scene in my head. You, you, you playing with the devil. Yeah. I don't like the sound of that. No, he, he's a fun devil. He's a good devil. But playing with the well, devil? Maybe you, you know, could think of another choice of words. Well, well okay, okay. I didn't say playing the devil. I said playing with I the know, devil. But I mean, you know that it does have other connotations. That's up to interpretation. <laughs> that's up to interpretation. I keep it G-rated. If you take it somewhere else, that, that's up to you. Interacting with the devil, maybe. That, that, you know. That's up to you. If you want to take it to that other world, that's okay. Now, one last question. I'll let you go back to the fans here. The last question is, October 7th, 8th, and 9th, Orlando, Orange County Convention Center. It's Spooky Empire at the big house, if you will. Are you going to be back? I better be back. <gasps> yes. I zombie walk all the time. Oh, they, here, look at my new shirt. Oh, look, look. Hey, it's cool. Dave Dent from Dare to Wear Clothing in, nice. U, in UK. Every spooky empire, he makes me a new shirt. Very nice. We'll put a link to your stuff, your site, yes. your Facebook page on ours at RileyandKimmy.com. Now, I hope I haven't scared you away and I can have you back on the show. Maybe we can talk about some really serious stuff because I know you're, uh, you're into a, a different type of thinking compared to some other individuals I know. Sometimes. And I would love to have you on our, our audio version of our show if you would come on. Yeah, and we can go for a drive sometime. I, 
You want to? There you go. You want to? Just yeah, don't let her. Don't let. Don't let her drive. No, she's driving. You don't want. Her. You don't. Uh, no. No. You don't. You yeah. don't want that. You. You. You really don't. 